the most common constraint, establishing standards and having the discipline to adhere to them is the most common constraint to running a business. So yes, we need to set these standards, but then we actually have to follow up and hold people accountable to performing them. That is not always the easiest thing to do. We're afraid because they're holding us hostage. Well, if they're not performing the task as taught, we wanna get rid of them. Well, realistically, what's going to happen if we get rid of them? We're gonna to have to work the store by ourselves for the rest of our lives because we don't have anyone to replace them. So holding them accountable becomes, are we presenting it in the right way? Do we have the right people? Do we have a recruiting machine? I don't got the kind of time it takes to get into all that right now, but there's so many different things that prevent us from holding people accountable to it. That's the next thing that truly, truly needs to change. And now comes the hardest part. We've talked about how not to establish standards. Now we have to figure out what should those standards actually be now? I'm not looking for your 385 page manual about all the things that need to get done. It's time to think about and have a talk with your leaders and your team. What should your customer service be? What is their struggle? What are the challenges that we face selling to our customers? And then what are the problems that you're trying to overcome so that when, then we can come up with solutions? If, for example, you have a challenge that, oh, I'm so tired of hearing, I'm just looking. Well, perhaps the problem is that they're greeting customers by saying, how can I help you today? And we need to change it to make a standard to engage them with a non-business opening line. When I go up to somebody and I say, wow, I noticed so much traffic, what's happening in the mall today? The appropriate answer to that is much less likely to be, I'm just looking, than if we had just marched right up to them and said, can I help you find anything? To which the answer is always, I'm just looking. Or frankly, if we just say, hi, how are you today? The answer is typically, just looking, thank you. The world of retail is a very strange place. But coming up with more specific standard, that's how we turn these visions into reality. This is how we choose just a few and drill in the basics. So if we extract from your 385 page manual, what are the four, five things that are most important to happen with every single customer, every single time to prove that we can give a consistent customer service experience. Let's say our challenge is a low number of items per transaction. Well, if we sell not too many pieces, chances are we're not showing enough pieces or showing them correctly or showing them at the right time. There's, there's plenty, but let's just start there. Well, perhaps then my standard will be must show each customer at least two different items. It's a simple, small step, but at least if we can make this one of our top five, we can get them to do it. When you think about items per transaction, think about something as simple as a fast food place. If you go to a fast food place, they will always ask you, you want fries with that? Or would you like supersize that? Or would you like to try our such and such special today, our new burger with the 27 burger patties and 30 pieces of cheese? Delicious. They are always upselling. What about your people? Are they asking every single time for each customer to buy something else? And if they're not, does that mean the employees of McDonald's are smarter than yours? Don't answer that. It just means that they choose specific standards to uphold and they hold them to the nines. They don't have the, the long 385 page manual. It's kept simple. And if you can just start with the simple and have them show their personality by doing more, this is where we get our foundation. Let's say you're having trouble getting your marketing and clienteling campaigns off the ground. Possible? Well, if that's the case, perhaps one of your standards would be invite every customer to join the loyalty program. It is not to get at least 80% of customers in the loyalty program, because frankly, that's a result. When we're talking about standards, we're talking the selling standards, we're talking about the behaviors that lead to the results. Not to say that you can't set an expectation of 80%, because we definitely want to have those goals and expectations, but when it comes to behaviors, 
focus on what can they do that's going to get them there, not just try harder, not just do more. It has to be very specific about the behaviors that get behind it. We can't tackle the big stuff until we have the basics. When it comes to implementing standards, the difficulty you will experience in implementing standards is directly proportional to your difficulty in getting the trash taken out every single day. Don't get too far ahead of yourself. Even if there is a real problem in the bigger picture, first tackle the problems that you face on the ground floor. Uh, on the ground floor. Don't even bother trying to get them add on, to add on if you can't get them to fill out their time card accurately on a daily basis. We have to begin where we start. It's baby steps. It's progress, not perfection. And I know that some days you go home and you've got your head full of dreams of all the things that you want to do, but then the next morning you walk in and no one went to the bank. Items aren't size. Somebody called out sick. Or worse, the, the mall calls if you're in a mall environment and says, your store's not open and it's quarter after, what should I do? All of these things are, are those challenges that we face in trying to get to the bigger picture. But the real way that we play the big game is by getting the small games taken care of first. Choose your first problem or two problems and then implement it. This is your choice. Do you want to practice limbo management or pole vault management? pole vault management? Are we going to keep striving for bigger and better things like the pole vault? Or are we going to try and set the bar lower and lower and lower, knowing that if we keep on lowering the bar, eventually they will hit it? My example for this is a, a little obsession of mine of eating competitions. And perhaps you've heard of the most famous eating competition, the Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest. For those of you who have not, every 4th of July, Nathan's Hot Dogs sponsors this huge competition to see how many hot dogs and buns someone can eat over the course of a 10 minute period. It's quite disgusting, I know, but it's fascinating. It's aired on ESPN and the whole bit. Now, this competition has been going on since the early 1900s, and it was just a couple of guys on the bench at Coney Island who started it. Uh, keeping in mind that all tales of eating competitions are probably exaggerated and crazy because that's the way they are, uh, this is the story as I know it. In the early years, it would just be a few at a time. And then it started to become more and more as the competition became, well, more competitive. Somewhere around the 1970s, the record seemed to be around 13. 13 hot dogs and buns could be the winner uh, on any given year in a course of 10 minutes. That is a lot of hot dogs and buns. And it stayed around there each year, 12 and a half, 12 and three quarters, 12, just lingered in that zone until one year, one competitor, a woman, by the way, decided that she was then going to train for this event. So as your stomach works like a balloon, it expands and contracts and, and learns to stretch, uh, she would eat a ton of food and then starve or, and not eat anything for a, a long time so the stomach would shrink back just to improve the elasticity of the stomach. Eat a lot, eat nothing, eat a lot, eat nothing, and then you get this real elastic stomach. So then at the competition that year, she won with 19 dogs and buns complete. That is a huge leap from what it had been the year before. And I assure you, everyone was up in arms about this. How dare she? This is cheating. You're sacrificing the integrity of this competition by doing such a thing. Oh, how could you? But what do you think they all did the next year? Absolutely, they trained for it. And they start doing the same thing. And don't even get me started about the buns in the water. That's a whole different category, right? But they would do it more and they would train for this and go to all you could eat buffets and then starve themselves for three days, et cetera, et cetera. Until what would happen is, they start having a little bit more. And then the record goes to 20. The record goes to 22. The record goes to 25. I'll be impressed if anyone knows what the record is now. It was just set this past year. 70. 70 hot dogs and buns in 10 minutes. Who on earth would possibly think this possible? Now here's, there's, there's a moral to the story. I'm not just trying to gross you out if you're listening to this before lunch. The thing is that 13 dog zone 
where everyone was competing around 12, 13, everyone just assumed, hey, that's a lot. That's good. That's about as good as we can get. But do you ever really know what's the best you can get until you take that next step? You take a small step to do something differently. You do something better. You make something new happen. This is the type of management we need to create. Don't be happy with the status quo. Don't be satisfied with just what's comfortable. We need to start with the simplest thing to see if they make a difference and then gradually continue building up, up, and up to get even more results. We don't want to keep setting the bar lower. We don't want to practice limbo management. We want to slowly set the bar higher and higher to engage in that pole vault management. So what's stopping you? <laughs> Make a decision to do things the right way. It's not always easy. It's not the thing that we can just pick up and, and do everything else the same and say, oh, let's just throw in this heat sensor technology and then suddenly we'll be this tremendous performer. It doesn't work that way. You have to make a decision and say to your team, it's time for us to make a change. I've let some things slide in the past that I can't allow to slide anymore. And now it's time for something different. I'm going to set into motion these four, five customer service standards. These are things we're going to do every single time with every single customer. I'm not taking away your personality. You can do them in your own style, but I expect these five things to be done. And if not, you can't work here because this is the store that I want to run. Now you need to have your recruiting machine in place first to make sure you have the right people, to make sure you have everybody that you need to do to, so that if they do walk out, you're not in too much trouble. But if you have all of that, they'll respect you more for making that decision to do what's right for your business. And you deserve to have things done right for your business. So that's your question is, what's stopping you? Uh, and the only thing stopping me right now is that is uh, my time for this morning. And I do want to invite you to learn more about what we have to offer and other, thing, other ways that we can help you. Um, so contact information is on the screen for you. Please be in touch. And thank you to uh, One Step Next Retail for uh, having us this morning. And thank you.